In this quick guide, we're going to go over on how to export the scene from Cinema 4D into ORBX, upload it on the render network, and download all the frames. So first of all, you're going to need to pay attention to which version you are exporting as, because that's also the version you're going to have to select on render in order for you to render your frames correctly. Secondly, if you have render passes, you also need to make sure that those are enabled in the render settings, but we'll go over that in a bit. One thing that's important to check before you start exporting is that the frame range you've set is correct. If you have a frame range starting from, say, 20 frames, the frames you'll get back from render will still start at zero, but will have a length of 80 frames. So this is something to keep in mind if you want to re-render part of your sequence, it is best to re-export the entire sequence and then upload that on render in order to make sure that the frame range is still correct in the exported frames and won't deviate. Otherwise, you will have some problems in post. But for now, I'll just take all of the frames and go to the uh, Octane Render tab where we can find the ORBX exporter. Now, I've gone ahead and selected the path already and I've enabled these two settings. In order for you to export an actual file, you need to enable it. And in my experience, it's best to click ignore rendering because otherwise you'll be rendering your sequence while we just want to render it on the render. I also disabled the open in standalone checkbox because it will open your file and then immediately load it into VRAM2, which could cause you to run out of memory and crash either uh, Cinema 4D or Octane or both. So after you've set the path, it's fairly simple. You just click Start Export. But there's one thing to keep in mind, and that's what I've said before. It is the render passes. So I've went ahead and set up a number of render passes here. And every single render pass you see here will be the ones that will be available on render as well. And also the settings you set here will be the settings that are being used on render. That's good to keep in mind because you cannot turn on or turn off passes after you've exported a file. So I'll just go ahead and click export. It will ask you to continue without saving, but you just click yes, because it will actually be saving the ORBX file, but no frames because nothing is being rendered. So now that our export is complete, we will jump on in into Octane standalone and uh, check if our export was correct. This is a crucial step because if the export in ORBX is not correct, it will also not be correct on render and you will be paying for faulty frames. So we're now inside of uh, Octane standalone and also important again is that it is the same version in which we just exported. Otherwise, we might have different results. So in order for uh, us to check whether or not our export was correct, we need to uh, click on the render target here and it will start uh, loading in the actual scene. Well, let's give it a second here and then we can check everything. Yeah, this all seems correct right about now. We also see that the length is correct from 0 to 100 frames. Okay, we also see that all the render passes that we selected here are exported correctly, so this looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and uh, upload the scene. So we're on the render website right now and uh, we'll be uploading our previously exported scene. We just drag and drop it onto the UI and then we wait until it's uploaded. An important caveat here is that you can also zip your ORBX files. So then they will upload faster and reach more nodes. After the upload is complete, uh, the processing will begin. So we'll wait until processing is done and then we can start our new job. Okay, processing is complete, so we can click create new job. When setting up our render job, we need to take a look at a couple of things. First and foremost, it is the render engine version. Uh, we need to use the same one uh, as we use to export and check our scene in standalone. Um, if the version in which you export it is not on the render network, uh, I highly recommend uh, downloading the standalone version uh, of one of the versions that's visible here and double checking it there 
before you render because you might run into issues otherwise. In my case, I use 2021.1.4, so I'm going to select that. Um, and one thing I also want to mention is that when you are getting frames that have a lot of issues that were not visible in standalone, sometimes RTX rendering could be the cause. So running a test with a few frames uh, is not a bad idea. And if there are issues, you can also run another test with a few frames um, and disable RTX rendering. Sometimes it helps. In the second panel, we can select our uh, outputs. In my case, I want an EXR output. Uh, I also want DWAA compression. It's a lossy format, but it's still really good to do post in and really lightweight. So I highly recommend checking out DWAA and DWAB for your scenes. Then I also used the ASUS CG color space and I want a multi-layer file because I don't want a whole bunch of different EXRs per pass. I want them all in one file. So I'm just going to select that and then click onto the next panel. In this panel, uh, you can select which methods you want to pay. Uh, if you want to manually review your frames or pre-approve them and select which tier you want to use. Now, the tiers are separated by how powerful a machine is. So the lower octane bench machines, usually also with lower VRAM, are on tier three, but there are a whole bunch more machines. So if you have a job that renders slow, like that renders fast, sorry, and has a lot of frames, tier three is highly recommended. It's also cheaper to render in tier three than it is to render in tier two. So in my case, our scene rendered fairly fast and rendered on 13090 in about 30 seconds. So I'm going to select economy. Now I want to pay with credits. Now the difference between credits and tokens is credits can be uh, filled up by um, either Stripe or PayPal. So they are directly debited from your bank accounts or credit card. Render tokens are the cryptocurrency token and they need to be filled up via the Polygon chain. Um, and uh, once you start rendering a job in either credits or tokens, you cannot fill up with the other method. So you will need to fill up. If you run out of credits, you will need to fill up via Stripe or PayPal and you cannot fill up via render tokens. Just something to be aware of. Now, I also want to uh, review my frames for any potential errors, but if you're confident in that your scene is going to render fine or you don't mind uh, spending a little bit more money in case uh, a node uh, renders a frame wrong, then you can click pre-approve frames. But for this case, I'm going to manually review my frames. Now, if your scene is a bit higher in VRAM, you uh, might need to take a look at this option where you can select the minimum amount of VRAM uh, that the machines need to have in order to be eligible to render your scene. Now, if we change to back to priority for a second, we can see that this drop down menu changes and we get a lot higher uh, VRAM. It's because, as I said before, the most powerful nodes are on the priority tier and the uh, the less powerful nodes are on the economy tier. But for our scene, it's not a problem. I'm going to select economy and six gigabytes just to be sure. Then we're going to continue to the cost estimate. Uh, standard, it fills in 100 to one, but uh, I will fill in uh, 650, which is how, how much Octane Bench a 3090 has. You can look up the scores of your cards here. In my case, it rendered for 30 seconds. So that's what I'm going to fill in. And it says it's going to cost uh, run about 0.7 render credits. But this estimate is not binding, so the cost might deviate from what we see here. So now that our job is done rendering, we can click download. And then we can check if there are any potential errors, but so far everything seems all right. So then I can just click, click select all frames and click accept selection. And then we can just click download outputs. 
So I can then just click download and all the frames will download to my hard drive.